So good afternoon to still, well, almost good afternoon. Good morning. I appreciate that. You always do that. Now, as it relates uh, to uh, the search, yes, IACP uh, did submit uh, their results uh, to uh, my team, to the administration on the 31st, which was on Monday, um, as expected. That was their timeline to provide that to me. Um, going into or prior to that, uh, there were six candidates, as you know, uh, that were interviewed, that made it through the assessment um, center, you know, that whole piece, and there uh, were four that made it out of there. Uh, David Franklin was one of the four, as I know it, uh, that made it out of there. And that was what I knew prior to um, Monday the 31st from receiving or after receiving uh, the information from IACP. So I expected uh, David Franklin to be a part of that because he was a part of the sixth meeting that went through uh, the assessment. And so um, having gotten the response from IACP without uh, Franklin on there, uh, I would like uh, to interview uh, Mr. Franklin. So I do have my team um, reaching out to see if that's even a possibility. I can't confirm that is so at this time, um, but when, I, when I'm able to, I will provide that information. I do not know uh, why uh, he withdrew. I learned that he uh, had withdrawn on Monday, you know, after receiving the information from IACP. And so, um, so I do want to interview him, and we'll see if that, if that stands true. He may not want to. I don't know. Good morning, Ms. Mayor. Good morning. Uh, what's the city's plan to deal with, you know, paying back for Emperors with the whole police pension fund? So our plan is one that we don't agree. So we're looking um, for litigation, um, as we've said, and we're going to go down that path because right is right and, and we feel wrong is wrong. And um, as it relates uh, to this in terms of paying back, and we also understand that the legislation that was approved at the time and at the state legislature was really around uh, areas that were planning to defund the police. The city of New Orleans has done the very opposite. We have fought hard for direct allocation, and we put those dollars to work real fast. And that's on the ground relative to retention, relative to recruitment, because we haven't stopped. We haven't taken our eye off the ball uh, with recruiting as well as retaining our officers. We do not agree uh, with what is being told to us about what we need to do. And so we're going to fight it every step of the way. That is my position right now. With um, You were saying that you guys don't agree with what's being told. Is that the recommendations? I know Emperors had recommended the city maybe transfer some of the people that are on NOMERS over to their system that would help you know, dissolve some of those payments. Is that something that you guys have considered? No. No, I said that we're considering going down the path towards a, a litigation. I don't agree with any of it. And so at this time, that is our approach. We don't think it's fair. We don't think it's accurate. So we're going to push back. Are you guys working with the city council at all to try to dissolve some of these issues? We're working uh, with, I'm working with my administration who has the responsibility to deal with it. Um, and so that's what we're going to do. We're going to push back. And I'm working with everybody. Anyone who wants to work with my team, my administration, I'm working with them. And so as it relates to this issue, we don't agree, meaning I don't agree, my administration doesn't agree, and we're going to fight it every step of the way. Mike, what do you Thank you. Good morning, Mayor. Good morning. So going back to the police chief search, yes. uh, after those assessment interviews, the external stakeholders included a note about interim chief Wood for, quote, that she does not have adequate experience and would benefit from mentoring. What was your reaction to that, and how will that weigh in your decision to afford a candidate? They submitted that? that to... I guess that was in their uh, assessment and rankings of their They submitted three. that to... ICP. Okay. Correct. They submitted that to ICP. Correct. Right. So what do you make of that? I respect, oh yeah, I respect, I respect um, their involvement in the process and I respect what they have submitted to IACP. I'll take all things into consideration. I'm open and I'm going to be fair in my process. What's the timetable for all that? We, you know, <clears throat> this has been delayed already mm -hmm. and I think the last thing you stated was it would be weeks to interview the remaining candidates. Why does it take so long? Sure, it's taken so long because it's very important. And this is one of the most, I would say, important decisions that I will have to make 
um, as mayor of the city of New Orleans, and as I look at the 894 days left uh, in this term, um, we know that getting into this search, it was something that was brought forth uh, by the people. That's what we were told. That's what we were told by members of the New Orleans City Council who moved forward to change the charter, to create, therefore, a process um, that I agreed to the process, meaning to do a national search uh, on the, and with the vision of giving the public a real opportunity, right, to shape and to move things forward relative to the leadership of the NOPD. And so with that, we have embarked upon a, a process uh, that was one encouraged, one that was blessed uh, by the New Orleans City Council on the front end. We're moving through that process. Yes, there have been delays, only delays uh, by the entity, by the partner, who has taken a deeper dive to spend more time in the community, spend more time listening uh, to the public. I don't see any harm in that, especially when it's moved a process forward, when it landed us over 33 uh, candidates, where those candidates uh, were going through a process that ended up being six that made it through an assessment center. And so here we are. So what we're going to do now that the list has been narrowed down, as you know, as IACP has indicated, from their uh, information on Monday, they will go through a, a much more rigorous evaluation process with the candidates who remain. And at the same time, I'm going to begin my process relative to interviewing. And so um, I'm going to not box myself in. I'm not um, taking long just to take long. Uh, I want to render a decision. I think that I've made it very uh, clear and real examples of how I make sound decisions and solid ones, and I take them very seriously, and this is just another one of them. And um, we're going to get there, and I'm excited, quite frankly, to how we've come. So no, no interview scheduled. You're waiting on something further from ISC. I have no interview scheduled as of right now. Um, what I am doing, I have my team actually reaching out to Mr. Franklin to determine uh, if he is interested in being interviewed, uh, making sure that you know it will be an open and a fair uh, process, meaning I'm open-minded, but I want to do that outreach to him. Then I'll know what my full complement looks like, and then we will begin uh, scheduling interviews. So that is my plan, and that's my process. I'll share more with you as we move through it. Sophie, and please look stick to one question and one follow-up. Sophie with the answer. Thank you. Um, I'm wondering if you can talk more about the Family Connects program. I'm curious about the funding. Where is that funding coming from? How much will it cost? Will there be jobs created through that? Um, and, and how that connects to any other specific early childhood programs in the city? Sure. Who are you with? The advocate. Oh, okay. Program, yeah. We're refreshing a question <laughs> like that. Good. Good. So as it relates to Family Connects, okay, so this was um, a project uh, that we have been um, working to create, working with stakeholders throughout the city. Uh, this is in partnership. We're calling it Family Connects for Maternal Health. Uh, this is our universal home visiting program. Family Connects is the partner, along with Turo, uh, as well as Ashner Baptist, you know, where babies uh, are born in our city. Um, the Family Connects, yes, will be hiring up uh, nurse, uh, nurses. Um, that, and also our hospitals as well, um, but we're hiring up those who will be doing the actual visits uh, into the home. So yes, jobs created from this. Um, we're taking a holistic approach. This allows us even to utilize dollars uh, that we have received direct allocation, the one-time ARPA dollars, but we're using uh, 10 million over course of a period, a three-year span. Even as we're focusing on mental health, 10 million allocation there, three year span. Uh, and it also attaches itself uh, to our early learning seat. So we look at this again holistic. We don't do things just because. We want to really connect the dots. We know that we have an issue, meaning our young people that do not have seats, zero to three. So the millage that the public approved 20 years for early learning seats sets itself right nicely with this Family Connects because when that baby gets home, uh, they will begin to get that visit within that first week. That can last up to 12 weeks, but it allows us to build trust, get into that home, and also triage any other issues or matters that may be happening in the home 
whether it's the living environment, whether it's the disconnection from work, school, whether it's understanding that other little ones are in that home that can be connected to those early learning seats, you know, whether it's helping that mom cope with postpartum uh, depression, like I had, Lord have mercy, um, you know, helping that mom, you know, that first week back and, and not knowing what to do. I was, at the, I was at the hospital the very next day with my newborn who was yellow, crying. I was crying, not the baby. So it's like I understand it firsthand, but when you mean connect the dots, this is how this city is connecting those dots from early learnings, first from maternal care and health, early learning seats, and then mental health as well. Thank you for that. Can I just ask about the $10 million? Was that $10 million from ARPA just for this program over three years? So or? our budget for this program is out of the ARPA dollars, and, um, and it's one-time money that we're allowing to kind of live with us over time, much like uh, the uh, Think Kids partnership with Children's Hospital, uh, with uh, the mental health services, again, building it out over a span of time. Uh, we're looking at, you know, hopefully um, we're able to allocate additional resources as we move forward in the 2024, 25, 26, you know, beyond 894 days of this term, but really building it to last and so that it lasts and lives with this city for generations. Thank Dan you. Myers with the Advocate and Dan Natasha with Fox um, Eric, uh, is there any chance that you would consider a candidate for the superintendent position who has not been produced by IACP? You know, um, I have that flexibility. I do. Um, it's not something that I've looked at just yet, but I do have that flexibility. Are you aware of any other candidates outside of the IACP process who might be interested? I am not aware of directly, no. No one's reached out to me um, saying that they're interested. No one, actually. So I'm not aware. Natasha? Hi, Mayor. Um, has IACP conducted the background checks yet on those top candidates, do you know? And also, why, why weren't those background checks done earlier on in the process mm -hmm. on more than just the top candidates? Sure. So background checks uh, were done. Um, were done, but this is a deeper level of an evaluation and a background. Um, and so that is my understanding. It's really going deeper. It's even interviewing, you know, you have uh, your references and the like. So it's, it's really going, going a bit deeper. And I'm, I'm entertaining uh, some of that as well. You know, do, do I go in and talk to some folks in Oakland? Do I, you know, I'm just, I'm thinking it through myself, you know, as I prepare to conduct my own interviews. But them, meaning IACP, going deeper, that that therefore helps me. Um, it costs money. You know, and we don't need to expend any resources unnecessarily. So when you get serious, you know, about uh, giving serious consideration, I think it just warrants us going a little bit deeper. Debbie Giano and Ann Merite. Mary, you talked about doing what's necessary to deal with the heat city employees mm -hmm. as well. Firefighters tell me they have four fire stations with no AC and as many as a third of their fire trucks. They think the biggest holdup is not so much supply as the bidding process to get the repairs done. Is there something that can be done to speed up the bidding process or maybe remove it in some circumstances to get those repairs made now while it's hot? Sure. So as it relates to the bidding process and relative to repairing and fixing uh, HVAC units throughout the city, this also speaks to the fire department. There is no separate for fire. It's our facilities, and yes, it is our public safety facilities, which are very much important and are a priority. We're taking it through the bidding process, the emergency procurement process. Sometimes you would think that it's faster, and I get so frustrated because I want it to go faster. But you know what? We have to make sure that we're doing the right things, meaning going through that process, um, securing uh, the contract appropriately, and that's what we're doing. And we are getting to it. It's a priority, and we're making the repairs. So nothing is less uh, important uh, to the city of New Orleans, to me directly, when you talk about my public safety team, nothing, the fire department is, is, no, is, is, is no less. They are equally as important. Every single partner within my public safety team is a priority, and I demonstrate that and will continue. But I understand. I really do understand the impact.
but I also understand the work, the hard work that we're all doing to make sure that we can get things repaired sooner rather than later. Is there any sort of a tiered priority system with the NOPD being on top to get its air conditioning done, city offices, then fire department third tier? No, no way. Uh, I don't create a tier uh, when it comes to serving the citizens of the city of New Orleans. And when you think about public safety, I think about it holistically. When I have my public safety meetings every, you know, every week and every Monday, it's not with one chief, it's with all of them at one time. That's how we work, that's how we do. And I do that to set the tone that one agency or department is not over the next, but collectively we work together, collectively we can troubleshoot, collectively we serve and protect the city of New Orleans. And so when it comes to the fire department and the issues that we're having around facilities, it's a priority, and it is there no second tier. There is Hay and then Jordan with WGNO. Also related, hi, nice to meet you. Um, also related um, to the Family Connects plan, um, I have to confirm that it's slated to last currently for three years. That's our goal. That's our goal. And um, we know that the, and what I'm being told in regards to crunching the numbers, it's about 1.5 million a year in terms of the service, like actually what, um, what, it, what it costs, like the true cost, which is minimal, right? And so when you think about the force multipliers, that's what we're looking at. Um, but we're partnering uh, and we're leveraging the resources and the partner right now is Family Connects. That's who will do the onboarding in terms of nurses and that's who will go out. And so um, we're looking at this again to live with the city beyond um, this particular term. Jordan, with Disney Hello. Hello. Back to the superintendent search. Okay. The scores that were produced in the evaluation report, were those scores just coming from the IACP, or was that a mixture of IACP and the panels? And then second, some council members say that the scores were produced without any context and that basically they didn't hold any weight. What's your response to that? Well, what I will say is that the results uh, that IACP provided on Monday the 31st are the results from the IACP process overall. The assessment center is a part of that process, which therefore yielded the responses and the results that they submitted to the city of New Orleans. The IACP and their process has been above board. Uh, they have been doing everything necessary to ensure that there is inclusion of stakeholders. The New Orleans City Council is a part of that. And you know we're going to continue to stay focused in yielding the best superintendent to serve the citizens of the city of New Orleans beyond the next 894 days of this term. That is my focus, and that's where I'm at. You know, I'm, I'm really tired of, of, of the back and forth, and it's like, you know, it's, it's, um, it's unnecessary. You know, it really is. And so, and it's, um, it's unnecessary, and I stand by IACP. I stand by their process, and I stand by the candidates that have made it to where we are today. Carly, what asked you? Hi, Mayor. Hi. So the, um, the woman who was shot on the interstate, on Lundy Gras, she died, and that came out this week. Yeah. Uh, bringing it back up about interstate shootings. Yeah. There have been lots of ideas floated about how to make things safer for drivers on the interstate, you know, doing more cameras, better lighting, more um, traffic details and police details. What would you like to see, especially if you had unlimited budget and could do whatever you wanted to solve interstate shooting problems? Sure. So, um, you know, my, my heart always gets full. These incidents are real. You know, it's real life. It's real people. And so learning um, that um, the victim to succumb to her injuries something that I don't take lightly. My heart goes out uh, to the grieving family as well and may her soul rest in peace. Um, what I would like to see, and this also ties to my most, uh, uh, me, my most recent meeting, even with uh, DOTD, and of course our continued partnership uh, with Louisiana State Police. 
uh, one is working in partnership, both um, relative uh, to um, the oversight of our interstate in terms of enforcement and the like. We did see real improvements uh, as it related to um, Operation Golden Eagle 3.0. Um, we saw improvements there um, in terms of stops, routine stops, just visibility. Uh, talk with DOTD uh, even about you know, um, the lighting, uh, about the challenges the city of New Orleans is having uh, with the lighting, uh, with uh, individuals um, causing harm uh, to uh, the, uh, what do we call them? The light, the, the, what do I call those? These little, the can, conduits, that's it, conduits. So the tampering with the conduits and for us to learn that you can touch a conduit that may be at the start of two lane and, and the lights are going out, going out further, you know, you know, past Carrollton and the like. So the thing is this, it's a scattershot approach, it seems, and we're really wanting to get our hands around it, but we need to work with our partners. DOTD is one of them, LSP, and so I'm, I really want uh, improved lighting, of course, improved enforcement, working towards that, manpower is an issue, and just routine, the cleanliness. I think cleanliness has an impact as well. It sets the tone. And so just regular and consistency is what I'm looking for. The license plate readers, you know, that we have been installing those, the ingress and egress on the interstate. Uh, we put resources there, those force multipliers. And, of course, um, for people, you know, who see something to say something. And lastly, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, just one follow-up. Uh, how many license plate readers have y'all installed? Oh, I'll get you that. I don't want to speak out of turn tell you one thing. It's used against me. <laughs> I'm learning a little bit. You know, David, did you have a question? Uh, kind of, sort of. Uh, oh, I didn't even see you over there. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sitting in the corner with Howard. I didn't give you no eye contact. No, that's <laughs> okay. Beautiful. Um, listen, the, the um, ADA and serving all of our citizens, we're actually featuring a uh, piece on, on Sherry Bergen and the type of work that's being done for all of the citizens of New Orleans. How important is the work or something like that? Well, you know, you mentioned Miss Sherry, and um, if you haven't been a mayor, you really don't know. But when you walk out here and you're giving, you know, your in information to the press and to the media, and and you have someone like Miss Sherry by your side, and and as we're being intentional about the information that we share and how we share that and embracing are people living with disabilities as we're giving the information. Uh, listen, it doesn't get any better. Having Miss Sherry by my side gives me a calm that I can't even explain. And that's when I say, if you, if you haven't been a mayor, you really don't know, but she gives me a calm. And when she's here, it's always necessary. And, um, and so I appreciate Miss Sherry, and I've told her that often. Uh, when I come out and when I do see her, um, but she keeps me calm, and that's very important. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you so much. Now, how do we